Hi everyone, I'm Maggie McGrath, Senior Editor at Forbes. This Saturday marks the 156th running of the Belmont Stakes. This year's race is a little different. It is not even being run at Belmont Park. We will see it at Saratoga Racecourse. Here to explain why and so much more is a man known as Fairway J, also known as Jay Ginsbach. He is a contributor to Forbes.com, a sports analyst, and he recently wrote a piece for us breaking down everything we need to know about the race. Jay, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here for some Triple Crown coverage in the Belmont, Maggie. A Triple Crown race without a Triple Crown contender. We'll get to which horses are running and why you like certain ones, but let's start with the very broad overview. What do people need to know about this year's Belmont, including why it's at Saratoga and how long is this year's race? We'll be run at Saratoga, Upper New York, the historic track. There's a lot of excitement for it, Maggie, and I think from betting it's going to possibly set records that was broken last year, but also um, we've got the first time since 2013 we have the Kentucky Derby winner and the Preakness winner going head to head. We don't have a triple crown at stake, but it's going to be uh, fun to watch, I think. And we've got a lot of angles, I think, to cover with what's happening with the race itself. Big day on Saturday. Um, always. It's the biggest. The racing festival is the biggest racing weekend. But Belmont Stakes Day has nine graded stakes, including six grade one races headlined by the Belmont Stakes. Just to break that down for folks who aren't as geeky about horse racing as you and I are, a graded stakes race is? Graded stakes is the highest level of races. You're going to see some races on the card that are just stakes races, not graded. They, they, have, they earn that by the level of um, quality of horses that are running. There is a high level of racing that is happening all day in Saratoga this year, as typically happens on Belmont Day. But I think most of the general public is most interested in the Belmont Stakes. So Jay, take us through the contenders. Which horses will be competing to win this year's Belmont Stakes? So it's interesting that we have the um, Kentucky Derby winner, Mystic Dan, who won the Derby at 18 to one odds, long shot came in, and he won by a nose in a three-way photo finish over Sierra Leone, who is going to be the favorite, both in the opening morning line at nine to five, but also at post time, he's expected to be the favorite. But also the Preakness winner um, is, is not one of the two favorites either. And so you've got a, you've got a battle here with, um, I think there's going to be a lot of support for Sierra Leone um, on top of and he's, his odds show that he's nine to five and Mystic Dan is five to one. Mind frames coming in at seven and two, but the horse, and we'll talk a little bit more, the horse that won the Preakness is Seize the Gray, eight to one. He was also that going off those odds to win the Preakness. He is a galloping gray, as you, if you watch, he's, his color is gray, and he's quite a story that I'm, I, I still plan on doing a feature and talking about more behind what, what's happened with Seize the Gray. He's completely publicly owned. He's got over 200 owners. They sell shares, maximum 2,500 shares, and the public is um, able to get out and purchase through my racehorse. You're gonna see a lot more. You're gonna see some of that in the coverage and the media. It's really become popular, and it, it came onto the scene two years ago when the Kentucky Derby winner was authentic, was owned by the, the people that buy shares through my racehorse. It's quite a story. It, it, talk, it, it really is about, um, the, you're, you'll hear Sierra Leone being over a $2 million purchase, and yet um, a lot of people can't afford to you know, buy horses like that. So they put in public shares and they, they put up the money and people are excited. And there's gonna be a party there for all the owners. They've got well over 200 people, but a specific place blocked out for the owners to fun, have fun. And, and so we'll get into that a little bit more, but I'll be putting a piece up about my racehorse and what that's all about as well. I've seen Seize the Gray being referred to as the people's horse, and I suppose it's because of those fractional shares that have allowed so many people to partake in his ownership. Who else in the field do you like? Well, the horse that's going to be, I think, a sharp money is uh, is Mind Frame, and Mind Frame is just two for two, lightly raced, wasn't coming on uh, 
you know, three-year-olds are still growing and developing. And that's, that's the beauty of trying to figure out, can they get this distance? Oftentimes a mile and a half of the Belmont, and they've never run that. But in this case, it's a mile and a quarter. So many of these horses have run the mile and a quarter, just uh, a few that were in the Derby, including Mystic Dad. But mind frame, Todd Pletcher, the trainer, has three horses in here, and this is one of them. He's lightly raced, he's two for two. First stakes race he'll ever run is the Belmont stakes. So he's moving up in class, and we've seen this before with Pletcher and some of the other trainers, including Chad Brown, who's the trainer of the favorite Sierra Leone. They, um, they know they have a, a really good horse. Um, racing fans that follow may remember a horse by the name of Arrogate, who was really unknown early in his three-year-old campaign. And then he broke onto the scene with a dramatic win in the Traverse, I think it was, and then just uh, came on the rest of the year, became a horse of the year. So so you've got horses that are not as named, but the, the odds makers certainly know this. They've got this this morning line at seven to two. So he's the second choice behind Sierra Leone. He's gonna get some support. And then there's uh, Honor Marie, who is, um, Whit Beckman has him coming in as the trainer. I think there's more value in that horse at 10 to 1. He may go off a little less than that. Second in the Louisiana Derby. Didn't show real well in the Kentucky Derby. But for novice fans that don't follow, they're going to maybe see that he finished eighth in the Derby, Maggie. But as you know, the trip is everything. And that horse got jostled at the front. He, he couldn't get a good position. And then he came on pretty well to finish eighth. And that now as a three-year-old growing, maturing, continuing to improve, many think that he's uh, got the top value in the race and a potential winner. Repeat that name for us, for those who are taking notes. Uh, Honor Marie, Honor Marie. Honor Marie, a 10 to one. You know, we'll get into the nitty gritty on betting because there is still time for people to get in their bets as they tune in today. But first, a lot of money is spent on the Belmont Stakes every year. Last year was a record-breaking year, both across the day and for the race itself. Jay, how much money typically do we see better spending on Belmont Day? Well, the reason we're doing this is the popularity of horse racing, but also the Triple Crown. And last year, $118 million, just over that, $118 million was bet on the Belmont Stakes. That's the all-sources handle. That's not just at the track. So. Um, that broke the record from two years ago at 112 million. And the expectation, even though we don't have a triple crown, um, and, I, and I say a record, a non-triple crown record of 118 million. When we have a horse going for the triple crown, winning the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, and then trying to complete it, like Justify did in 2018, and, and then in 2015, we had American Pharaoh break the long streak, then we're gonna get record record betting. But this is still going to be a positive and a very much well bet. And a lot of it is because of all the other graded stakes. And then we get to the Belmont later in the day and people are excited. And in this case, the favorite, Sierra Leone, is going to get a lot of support. And for fans that like to bet on the favorites, even though the return isn't as great, they, you know, there's a lot of more rooting interest. And a horse like Seize the Grey, though, that has such public support now and you know, if we've got hundreds and hundreds of owners, they're going to put a few dollars on it. So you may not get as great of odds on Seize the Grey, and and he's maybe not quite up the task here uh, in my evaluations, but he's going to get a lot of support. And that's the excitement of the horse racing. We put a few dollars down or however many dollars you want to bet, and then there's other ways to add it. If you don't want to, if you're not going to get a big payoff in Sierra Leone, you can get into the exotics, the exactas, trifectas, that's coming in first and second, and first, second, and third in order. And Maggie can maybe fill in some of the other ways to bet, but there's plenty <laughs> of options in terms of betting when you want to step into the window and pick win, play, show, and, and all the other options to do it. Yes, let's take a step back and break that down for folks who are looking to know how to bet. The simplest way to bet, the way I got into it with my granddad, was just saying, I'm going to put $2 on Silver Charm to win. And that's a deep cut for those of you who were following horse racing in the 90s. You can also bet win, place, show, which means this horse will come in first, second, or third place. And then, Jay, explain the exotics one more time. You mentioned the exacta and the trifecta. What are these bets? <laughs> So let me let me go through this a little bit. So I'll try to simplify, hopefully, for some. This is para, <clears throat> excuse me. This is para mutual betting, and so for fans that are watching, you're going to see the odds come across the screen, and though the the money is all put into a pool, and you're essentially betting against other people's opinion on the race, and the pay, and then there's a takeout from the big pool 
Um, I'll use 15% as a round number, but it can be a little more than that. And then once that takeout, the, the money is spread and, and paid out for win, place, and show, first, second, and third place. Then there's separate pools for the exotic or exactas, which is picking the exact order of the first and second place finisher, and then the trifecta, which is first, second, and third. There's also bigger payouts for superfecta, first, second, third, and fourth in exact order. And you can box these horses and it co you know costs a little bit more money. The nice thing about the trifectas, superfectas is you don't have to bet a dollar or even $2. You can do 50 cent exactas or, tw tw or 20 cent superfectas and add multiple horses into there. Um, but the difference is if, if a lot of our followers are here in the US and you've got legal sports betting at some of our sports books, some of those may offer fixed odds on the race. So you can maybe log into your app and bet, bet the race and see Sierra Leone might be three to two, meaning uh, plus 150, let's say. Um, there, you might not get quite as good because they're, they're planning on that horse maybe getting bet down even from nine to five, which is just under two to one odds. So you can go in and place a fixed bet. Now you've locked in your bet. But if you're betting um, at a horse track, at a casino, and you're in the paramutual pool, you're going to get the odds that are at the time that they break from the post and break from the gate. And that's the difference you're, you're going against public opinion. So when we talk about Sierra Leone, the favorite, a lot of people that are not as familiar with races, they're going to see Sierra Leone. They think he's the favorite. He just missed in the Kentucky Derby. He's a closer. He can go, he can get the distance. He's well-bred and he's a high priced horse. They paid a lot of money for him and they're expecting him to come in. They're going to put a few bucks maybe on the favorite, but um, like you said, you could bet other ways beyond even, uh, Exact a trifecta. I'll comment on one more thing. With all the multiple races and the big graded stakes, people do pick three, pick four, pick fives. And those are the Belmont stakes will be included in those. So the two races before, you can pick the winner of each race along with the Belmont. You're trying to get the top three. It's one of the hardest ones to hit, but your payouts and the uh, intrigue and excitement for it is the payouts are bigger, right? So I am a historically that's, that's terrible that's handicapper. Yes, I am an historically terrible handicapper, so I will not be trying to bet the pick three. But for those of you who do feel a little gutsy, that would mean tuning in well ahead of the post time for Belmont and catching the few races before and picking the winners in those. I want to break down a few more terms that you just said for those who are looking to follow the coverage today. You said you can box an exacta or trifecta, and that is my personal betting strategy. Jay, can you explain what it means when you box a bet? Sure. So let's say you want to do an exacta and you want, I like Sierra Leone, but he may not pay off as much in the win pool. So I could bet him to place. It's going to be even less, but let's say I'm going to do a $2 exacta and I'm going to take Sierra Leone to win. I'm going to take all the other horses to come in second. You can do that. And that's just a straight exacta. That would cost $2 times the other nine horses. So it cost $18. You could certainly do it for a dollar cost you uh, eight or, or excuse me, nine, nine dollars. And if you box them, now you're going to take Sierra Leone. You're saying, okay, I like Sierra Leone. I'm going to include him for sure. But that honor Marie, you know, 10 to one, maybe he goes off a little less. I think he's got a shot. And I certainly think he could finish top two or top three. So I'm going to include him. And then I, maybe I'm going to include the, the Kentucky Derby winner, Mystic Dance. So I'm going to box those three horses in an exacta. Now, if people wanted to simplify it, let's just take a step back from the boxes. When I was a kid, I mentioned Silver Charm. That was 1997, I believe, made a, a nice run for the Triple Crown, lost at Belmont Park after winning the Preakness and the Derby, possibly 98. But I bet on Triple, I bet on Silver Charm because I was eight years old and I loved Silver Charm's name. So for folks who've never watched a race before, should they go by the odds? Should they go by the name? Should they go by the trainer or the jockey? What's what's your recommendation for the simplest way to watch this Saturday's race? Your, your ability to um, maybe read some of the things out there, um, what some of the experts are thinking and saying, but also understand that it is a horse race and so many things can actually go wrong in the race and when it's a larger field like the kentucky derby as i mentioned you can have struggles in finding lanes and breaking from the gates um, we've seen horses stumble out of the gate it sets them back so i think you have to kind of keep it all in line and understanding that well uh, you might want to look at some of the favorites or read you're going to hear a lot about sierra leone and he's a closer and he's 
the best horse in the race. We saw Mystic Dan win the Derby. Now, wasn't as thought of, certainly wasn't the longest, longest odds, but it certainly happens, and we see it often in horse racing. Especially the reason people bet the uh, trifectas and the superfectas is we often see a longer shot come in to those spots in the Belmont, which provides the higher payouts. But if you're looking, um, I mentioned some of them. You, I don't, you know, Mystic Dan came in second in the Preakness. He's got the, uh, he's got the, the breeding to certainly get the mile and a quarter. We've, he's, we've seen that. And he's going to get support. You, If you want better odds, you'd probably look at him or Anna Marie than the favorite Sierra Leone. But um, I'm not as big in betting the favorites, but I do think Sierra Leone's the best horse in this race. One more comment about him is that his trainer's Chad Brown. He's won this race a number of times, just like Todd Fletcher, who has three horses in here. But Chad Brown made a jockey change in this one. Regular rider, top rider, Tyler Gaffleone. Um, was taken off him and Flavian Pratt, who made a name out here on the West Coast, he's a terrific rider as well, stronger stretch runner. He's gonna replace him and ride him. Chad Brown made some interesting comments. I put that in my article that um, he tried to not, you know, run him under the bus, but he thought he didn't make the right decisions coming in the stretch and how he changed and changed hands with his horse coming down and he lost by a nose. So he's made a ch chalky change in this one. And uh, some are gonna believe that Pratt can get it done. but. Um, I don't know if I answered specifically, but the uh, how do you come about it? If you're just recreational, just read some of the places. Go to some of the so we read some of my things about what I'm reporting from other top handicappers and analysts that that follow it, and and then kind of make some determinations. If you're watching the day of the race, people that get into watching them in the paddock, how are they? How do they look on the track? Um, those are other things that serious horse players consider as they bet on the races. Now, Saratoga Racecourse is famously known as the Graveyard of Champions. Secretariat lost there at the Whitney in 1973. American Pharaoh, another Triple Crown winner. I watched him lose in 2015 in the Travers. Does Saratoga's reputation for upsets factor into the odds or your outlook for this race at all? It's amazing that those things happen, that the top horses, and yet we come back to very simplify. It's a horse race, right? Some, uh, the best horses don't always win, We, not even close. The favorites win about, if you use a round number, a favorite in the horse race will win about a third of the time. And so if you have a heavy favorite in a 10 horse field, if, if Sierra Leone's going off really less than three to two or plus 150 or less, in this case it's more than like nine to five, Serious players are saying, I'm not getting the value on him, even though he's the best horse. Can he win this? Of course he can. He's bred and he's shown it. And he's finished first or second in all five of his races, right? And, and most of them, other than his maiden, have been the stakes races. So he's um, shown he can do that. But um, Belmont Park is known as Big Sandy. It's a deeper sand track. Saratoga, not quite as deep. Um, but Maybe that's part of what's happened at Belmont is the track surface plays in. It's a heavier, it's, it's a little more wear on the horses. They're not as familiar. And maybe that's why some of these all-time greats and some of the graveyard favorites have, have lost because they weren't quite up to task in the track is another thing we haven't talked about, but always something to consider. Um, so I think Sierra Leone is a well-supported favorite here. He's worthy of being the favorite. I think he's the best horse. Um, if you're betting him and want to have some action on it, he's, he's probably your choice. But if you're looking for some value and ways to add in a potential higher payout, we've talked about some of the ways to do that and some of the other horses as well. Sierra Leone is the favorite, but the favorite only wins one third of the time. Those are wise words ahead of the Belmont Stakes. Fairway J, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Hey, terrific to be with you. I hope uh, everyone enjoys the great race day and uh, we'll do it again soon. Take care.